ikaw yung tagabantayan ng library, ikaw pa yung taga-process ng libro, minsan taga-cover pa ng books at taga-linis pa ng library. You also have to budget, manage the library, catalog books, and interact with users. I realized that I can't change my personality or who I am just to suit her, and I can't be fake. I will never work as a one-man librarian again. This is a new video about being a one-man librarian and my experience as a one-man librarian. So as you can see, I am in a different setting because you work from home ako ngayon, and I usually film in my office which has aircon. So before I filmed or started the YouTube channel, I asked permission first from my boss kung pwede ba akong mag-video dun sa office ko. So I just film on the mornings or during lunchtime. So I try not to, to do this on my work hours. So we will talk about being a one-man librarian. So what is a one-man librarian? So if you are not familiar with librarianship, I recommend that you start my video on what librarians do in the Philippines and how to be a librarian in the Philippines. And I also have job hunting tips for new librarians and professionals. One-man librarians, as the word says, means a librarian who works alone in the library. He may have staff or not, but essentially this person is the one managing everything about that library. And madalas, here in the Philippines, for schools with small populations, or mga schools na titipid that they can't afford hiring library staff, sometimes you find yourself as a one-man librarian. So this is just my own experience as a one-man librarian and why I will not, not be a one-man librarian again. So in my own experience, my first job was being a one-man librarian in Manila. So I'm from Iloilo City and after the board exam, parang lumaki yung ulo ko and I thought that I could do it alone. And I somewhat romanticized the concept na leaving your home, starting again in a place where no one knows you, and somewhat nag-fail ako doon because I didn't realize how lonely it would be kasi nga may ideal ako na parang ganun. So I first worked in a small college library. I will just not give any more details kasi baka you might guess where the place is. It's a isang college na parang two years old pa lang. So since hinahabon nila yung CHED certificate that they can operate as a college, so they needed a librarian. They were on the process of complying with the CHED requirements of having 5,000 core collections sa mga books. This is a small college with around three course offerings. So I was attracted to the job because parang stay in with free stay and I was in Manila. There is an advantage also to being a one-man librarian because you're alone and you are free. So you can make up your own rules about the library, and you can set the new standards for that library. But the advantage ends there because one of the disadvantages of being a one-man librarian is ikaw nga mag -isa. And I was once in a restaurant. May nakita akong waiter. So I ordered my food. So I took the order from this person. Siya rin yung nagluto at nagserve ng pagkain. So in my experience, parang ganun din yung one-man librarian. Ikaw yung tagabantay ng library, ikaw pa yung taga-process ng libro, minsan taga-cover pa ng books at taga-linis pa ng library. You also have to budget, manage the library, catalog books, and interact with users. So it was just a small school but it turned really overwhelming so fast. Nagpalit lang ako ng setting kasi I was really into my story. Talagang carried away ako ng kwento ko. Ngunit, nung pinlay ko ulit ang video, wala pa lang audio yung video. Doon natapos ko na yung kwento ko. So, I had to refilm this. My boss was okay, but she kind of reminded me of Miranda Priestly, yung character sa The Devil Wears Prada. I probably won't go into details kung ano yung mga problems na na-encounter ko, but I think she's brilliant and amazing. Yun lang, she was too strict. All I can say about the place is that it has a really high turnover rate. I think that already says a lot about the work environment. While my boss was okay, she always criticized me for being an introvert. Sinasabi niya na hindi daw ako nagsasalita, bakit daw yung nanay ko, who she met, parang mas extroverted ba than me. But I realized that I can't really just change my personality to suit her. Eh, anong magagawa ko kung ganito talaga yung aking attitude? Yes, I'm trying to improve and change, but 
hindi mo naman mapipilit ang isang introvert to be more outgoing kung yun na talaga yung personality niya. I realized that I can't change my personality or who I am just to suit her. And I can't be fake. I can't just present a fake persona para lang sa kanya. No one can force anyone to be more outgoing and there's nothing wrong at all in being an introvert. So in real life, if you know me, I'm really quiet and it takes me a while to open up. But I'm really talkative and open when it comes to people I know and who I'm familiar with. And other than that, I found myself working on weekends and at night just to comply with the requirements. So there was one time I had to go to Manila just to buy some books. And I had my brother accompany me and he was like kind of annoyed and asked me, Binabayaran ka ba para sa time mo this weekend na lumabas ka just to buy books? And hindi, hindi ko siya nasagot kasi nga I wasn't paid for it. And even late at night, I would work. And there was one time before the Ched visit, we had to stay up until 1 a.m. just for the documents. So there came a day that I realized that I really had to leave. Usually, every year, there's a big book sale in SM Manila. And there was one night na lumabas kami around 9 p.m. the closing of the book sale na. So I felt so tired browsing around books for the school. And then, nung pa na kami, she accidentally hit the car in the parking lot and she blamed me for not watching her car and it's like i was so sleepy that night na hindi ko na observe yung mga surroundings ko and they had a long discussion about the car but nung nakalabas kami doon uh, on the road she changed lanes we were almost caught by the traffic police but she just explained that she's a school president that she has a lot of responsibilities and she can settle it some other time so parang kinausap niya lang yung traffic police but that night, while we were driving home, I realized that, do I really want to stay like this? That time, I was really scared because it was my first job. And I was scared and nervous because it would be my first resignation ever. But then, one time, my mother visited and I found myself crying because I just can't take it anymore. And then I realized that I was so young then, and I had a lot more opportunities in the future and not just be stuck in this job. So I decided to resign. Only after nine months since I first started. My boss was kind of disappointed that I was resigning and yung nangyari pa is ako pa yung naghanap ng replacement ko bago ako tuluyang umalis. Which I realize is not right kasi nga, there is supposed to be people like HR people who are supposed to be the ones who will look for your replacement and not you. And I gave her the reason that I wanted to go back to Iloilo City kasi nga, I will enroll in graduate school. And looking back, I don't regret that decision at all. But here are some lessons that I've learned from that first job. I realized that I have a choice when it comes to jobs. If you are applying to jobs, you should also scrutinize yung potential employer mo if it is a right fit for you. I learned that you need to thoroughly research a place before applying and to really know kung ano yung nature ng work at ang environment sa lugar. So now, if I'm trying to apply for a job, I would try to talk to someone working in the organization itself and ask questions. Sometimes, ang first impression natin sa isang company is not actually what the reality of that company is. One of my non-negotiables is that I will never work as a one-man librarian again. It feels like you're the only one defending the library. Kung may mga kasama ka, there is a clear division of labor. In case you need to defend something, you have people to help you in the library that it's very important to have your own support network. So here in Iloilo City, may other librarians, classmates, teachers, and mentors that I can ask if ever I have questions. Before I move to another place, I would really think it thoroughly kasi nga when I was younger, I romanticized the concept that going to another place where no one knows you so you can somehow start again. But I didn't realize how lonely it would be. And as I said, I'm an introvert and it takes me a while to open up to people and it really takes me a long time to make friends. I would feel really depressed and lonely if I'm in a place na wala talaga akong kilala and I have to start again. Before you resign from a job, you should have another job lined up for you. So as much as possible, apply for jobs while you are working. Unlike me, nag-resign lang ako without any backup plan. But it took me several months to get another job. It's difficult to just resign from a job without a next job to fall back to. Even if how much you dislike your current job, if it's your only source of money, it's not a good thing to just resign out of the blue without any next job lined up for you.
But that time, I enrolled in grad school, and the job wasn't really good for my mental health anymore. So I think that time, I had no other choice but to resign right away, rather than risk feeling more depressed and sad on that job. That's my story about being a one-man librarian. So if you are or have been a one-man librarian, you can share your experience in the comments below. And comment, like, and subscribe to this channel for more videos about librarianship.